Hi everyone, welcome to Mindful Crafts and More. I'm Katrina. If this is your first time checking out my channel, welcome. Take a look at this video or any of my other videos. And if you find yourself inspired, join my channel. For those of you guys who are returning, welcome back. I really appreciate you just hanging out with me for a bit. So guys, today is another Try It Out Crafts Tuesday. This is number two. And I'm really excited about today because today is a day I get to accept a long awaited challenge that I have wanted to do. This is to help out a dear Yarny friend and a phenomenal um, crafter by the name of Marsha Lee over at Blind Stitches Creations. So I'm not sure if you guys have met her yet, but she is a very, very wonderful person. And she has put out a challenge. She has lost her vision and um, she continues to craft. And it's just, it's just a wonderful, wonderful thing. Not only is she continuing to craft doing the things that she has done before, she's actually ventured out into learning new crafts. And I just think that is wonderful. So today is going to be a huge shout out to Marsha Lee, as well as accepting and fulfilling a challenge that has been long awaited. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, what am I wearing? I am wearing a zigzag knit scarf that is made from a line brand pattern. And the pattern's been out for quite a while. Um, I really do like it. It's done with homespun yarn and a 10.5 uh, knitting needle, size US 10.5 knitting needle. Um, I really do like working with the homespun yarn if I am knitting. It is a bit more challenging if I'm crocheting, but for knitting, it's a wonderful yarn. And it gives very nice uh, texture and definition to whatever it is that you make. Um, this is a wonderful way for you to practice increasing and decreasing as the whole entire scarf is increasing and decreasing. And it's all garter stitch. So you're knitting every single row but you're working on increases and decreases. And you do have to have some counting, but it's a really nice um, scarf. It's very long because I use the whole, pretty much the whole skein of the homespun yarn. I do not know the colorway. Um, this was made a while back and I didn't have the yarn band uh, for it. On the end, I decided to embellish it with uh, some tassels. They're not very thick tassels, but I do like the way that it came out and I love the scarf. Um, really pretty uh, colors, the way they kind of blend into one another and yeah, beautiful. So if you would like to make one of your own, it is a free pattern. You can get it. It's available on the Lion Brand uh, website and it is called Zigzag Scarf. Um, you would just have to type in the one that is using the homespun because they do have multiple versions of this particular scarf. All right, so check it out. All right, so the next thing is I have an FO. My FO is that I did complete my eye patch, okay? So I did complete, it's a sleep mask, um, but I did complete it. I got the eye cord, it's all attached and all ready to go. All right, now, the way this is made, it is double-sided. So if you see it here, you can see that it's double-sided. It's made in the round, okay? And it's double-sided. So now, on this side, I have it closed up. So when I put this I-cord on, when I just continued it with this I-cord, I closed it up and connected the two um, sides. But on this side, I did not. So here it is open and you can see it here, okay? Now it is open so that in case you wanted to put something soothing in there, you can, 
like lavender or just something like that, that you might think might be soothing. You could put maybe some ice in it if you wanted a cool eye patch or something like that. You could do that. Um, it's available to you. So I did not close up both ends of it, but I really do like the way it turned out. Again, I did talk about this one on the previous uh, episode. Uh, so please go and check that video out if you have not checked it out. All right, but beautiful pattern. I love it. All right. So now I have a few other things that I'm going to show you, and then we're going to get right into the challenge. All right. So in doing the challenge, I had to figure out exactly what activity I wanted to do as I am blindfolded to see and get an understanding and um, better appreciation of what a person who either has impaired vision or no vision has to uh, learn to live with and have challenges with on a regular basis. For me, it's easy. I can take the eye patch off right now because my vision, at least with my glasses on, <laughs> is okay. Um, but not everybody has that opportunity. And uh, I definitely think that it is important for us to be able to relate and to understand. Okay, so I'm absolutely accepting this challenge. Now, I have a few hats here and I'm gonna show them to you and then I'm gonna choose one of them to work on for the challenge, okay? So this particular hat right here is a rolled brim beanie, okay? It's a rolled brim. So now if you're doing something in stockinette stitch with knitting, then it will roll. It just has a tendency to roll. That's the way the stitches are, okay? The fabric that is made from stockinette stitch does tend to roll. Now you could probably um, block it to get it to not roll, but in this case, we wanted it to roll. And yes, so this is a rolled brown baby beanie, okay? So now this next one is a garter stitch edged beanie, okay? So what I did here, as you see, I knit around, purled around, knit around, purled around. And then I get this beautiful garter stitch on the brim. And then I did a twisted stockinette stitch, which is an e-wrap knit for the loom, okay? And that's how I got these stitches up here. The third hat is here. So this one here is a ribbed brim beanie, okay? And for this one, I did knits and pearls within the same round uh, for several rounds. And then I did the twisted stockinette stitch which is an e-wrap for the remainder of the beanie, okay? So three different beanies, one with ribbing, one with a garter stitch edge, and one with a rolled edge, okay? So three different ones, all right? So I think I am going to choose this one. This one is one that is knit and one that is purled within the same round. All right. I do think this is going to be a challenge. Let's see if I can do it. Um, you guys say a prayer. Okay. We will see. Um, all right. So now what I have to do is have all my materials, right? So for this activity, I'm going to need a loom. I've chosen a 31 peg loom. It does have an anchor peg which can help me to keep track of where I am, all right? Um, my loom tool, my yarn, and I'm going to be using this Charisma yarn, okay? Charisma is a category five. It's made by Loops and Threads. Uh, really nice yarn, has nice texture, and I've worked with it before. Uh, and if I work with it with this large gauge loom, hopefully I won't have too many holes in my hat, okay? Now, I have a double pointed um, knitting needle here, 
And I use that sometimes to figure out how long my item needs to be or when I can stop. So usually a rule of thumb for me is once the length gets to be about the same as the width, then I'm probably done. We may do a little bit less than that, but we'll see. All right. So are you guys ready for this challenge? All right. So let me go ahead and share my screen. Okay, so now you guys should be able to see me in the upper corner, all right? Let's see, um, I'm gonna make this bigger, even though I'm not gonna be looking at it. Okay, so let's take my glasses off. Okay. Wow, I can't see anything. Okay. So now what I hope is that you guys will be able to see my hands. Okay. I got to find my anchor peg and it is here. Okay. Okay, so now I have my yarn. Okay, so this is the end of my, this is the end of my yarn. I'm gonna make a slip knot. and find my anchor peg. Okay. All right, so now I have to kind of decide which direction I wanna go in. Um, I think I'm going to go in this direction. Okay. I'm going to go in this direction. All right. So okay. So I'm going to go around. Hold on, let's see. Let's put that in. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna go behind and around. Uh -oh. It feels like more than one. There we go. So I'll go around. One and two. Okay. And I'm going to do another one. Okay, so I'm doing a double E wrap um, cast on. I just find that if I do this particular one, 
then it is less um, loose, the, the ends are not as loose. So in doing this, as I'm doing it, what I'm finding is I really have to rely on um, my fingers to do the stitches. And I, I don't have my eyes to, to gauge, you know, um, what I'm doing. So I'm just truly relying on and I hope that you guys can see this. <laughs> Definitely a challenge. And I think, you know, if I didn't have the vision, then I would not rely on some of the senses that I rely on right now. did not practice this guy. This is without any practice. So and that's the way it is, you know, when you're trying something new, right? And so I understand that Marsha Lee was able, uh, is just willing and just a trooper and she's just want to learn new things and I just really applaud that. I think it's great. Now once I've gotten to the end, because this is a 31 peg, um, then I have to make sure that I actually cast on all of my pigs. I believe I did. I believe I'm, I am. Rather. This eye mask feels very comfortable, by the way, guys. I was able to make the four stitch eye cord and uh, I didn't measure it. I, I really just kind of made it until it got 
you know, to the other side. And then I kind of, I tried it on several times just to make sure it wouldn't be too tight and, you know, kind of squeezing on my eyes. So it does feel comfortable. I don't know that I'll be able to do this whole thing in one session because uh, I don't really want to make this video too long for you guys, but I absolutely want it to be authentic. So therefore, I'm not going to um, do a whole bunch of um, editing of it just so that you guys can see this is this is really me doing the challenge. Okay, so I'm back at my anchor peg, which is right here, okay, which I was trying to feel for. And so that's been one round, okay. And So it should be just one on each one of these. Why does this feel like it's two? This feels like this is coming around. So it feels like I just didn't knit it. Okay. All right, so that is one round. I've just done my, uh, my cast on. Okay, so now let's go to round two. All right. Um, so now I'm going to wrap. Over to So now I'm gonna do a purl. So in order to do a purl, you bring the yarn to the front and you go from the bottom. So I have to move this stitch up. You go behind the stitch. Scoop up your yarn. Okay. Take the old stitch off, put the new stitch on, and you tighten it. Okay, so that's a purl. All right, so now I gotta go back and e wrap the next one. E wrap the next one. bring it to the front, move this up. Scoop it up. And take the old one off and tighten, okay? 
Now wrap. Wrap. Bring this one forward, push the yarn up. Sweep it up. Take the ball one off and tighten. Okay. Wrap the next two. Now this particular loom, I think is, is helpful because it has a nice groove. Um, all looms are not the same. So that's, you know, something to keep in mind. Your tools, they really do matter. Um, and if you have to rely on, you know, touch more than being able to see it, then, um, yeah, the tools really do matter. So guys, have you guys ever tried to loom knit? Uh, loom knitting is, like I said, it's really, um, 
a good way to begin knitting. If you have trouble with your hands, Okay, so now sometimes when I'm doing a curl, I will use the yarn to help me. Okay, so then this is a knit. And it's, I'm busy focused on <laughs> trying to feel that I'm not necessarily um, thinking about all those basic things, but I should. Now this yarn, I think um, a bulkier yarn is probably easier to work with because you can feel it or um, a yarn that, you know, is just a little bit more firm. So I did a pearl there. So okay, so hmm, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm just going to keep going. Knit. Because I don't know how to fix it. <laughs> This is going to end up being a roll for them guys. Okay. Simply because I made an error. Maybe it'll help it not to um,
Thank you Christ, let me. I can take this off now. So yeah, this is, we're just going to convert this into a row of brown. Since I, I did one row, one round of uh, knits and pearls. stitches um, I think if if I were to start again then I definitely would uh, have to label with some kind of a marker a, a better marker on the pig maybe that would have helped even though I had that anchor pig out Somehow, I did not feel for it at the right time and I missed it. So we're going to see what happens with it. Okay. Now, you can choose to do one at a time or you can choose to do um, the wrapping the whole round and then going. Um, I do find that when I do that, then I kind of get laddering on my hats and I don't like the laddering effect. So, Although I have done it before, I have actually done it where you knit two rounds at the same time, which is really interesting to do, but um, I don't know that I would be able to do it if I, I can't see it because you really have to be able to see those um, stitches and I want to you know, truly be able to at least get a basic one done. And then I think I would just delve into, you know, a little bit more complex from there. And that's just knowing myself. I would absolutely want to know how to do it. So I would try, um, but I would just try to get this um, basic type of um, hat done first.
take some time, that's for sure. And this is a very huge learning curve. Very, very good. Skin from here. I hope you guys can see this. Um, I'm really hard to concentrate, so it's not um, easy to talk and do it at the same time. <laughs> So the one thing that I do find is if I'm, while I'm doing this, I feel uh, my sense of uh, balance. It's, it's hard to tell the um, position sense is, is a little impaired as well because we use our eyes to help us in so many ways.
guys, I know I've been real quiet. I'm just really trying to concentrate. Just keep going and going and going until it's as long as you want it. And so at this point, it doesn't even matter if I'm counting or not. I just need to keep going until it gets to be as long as I want it to be.
hope that you guys can still see me. I don't end the camera. have my eyes closed while I'm doing it so kind of like the trying to craft in, in the dark <laughs> see on the inside here these are my my stitches and it's coming along pretty good that's probably be about the um, length of maybe a, a border if I have a border but again because of the way I started it um, it's not gonna I don't think it's gonna roll
Okay, guys, I am back. Wow, that was quite a session. Um, so I am done with my hat. I have just changed it to uh, the right side. I do see some errors that I have made um, um, where maybe my stitches weren't as even. Um, but for the most part, I I really do like the way it turned out. So it's not exactly a, a rolled brim like I originally had planned, but I do think that, you know, it came out, you know, pretty good. What do you guys think? So what did I learn from this? Uh, okay, let me turn this light out. Okay, so, wow, um, the lights are bright here. What did I learn from this experience? Okay, so uh, you definitely have a heightened sense of senses when you lose one thing, then others really try to kind of take over. I actually had my eyes closed while I was doing it because uh, there was really no need for me to keep blinking underneath the um, 
eye uh, mask, but I, I think that, uh, yeah, I missed a stitch here, or maybe it's just uh, wide or something here. Um, and so it is hard, you know, you can't see the stitches, you have to feel them and hope that what you're feeling is what you are kind of imagining in your head. This is a wonderful, you know, wonderful experience. I want to say thank you so much uh, for the challenge. Um, I think it was great. <laughs> and I hope that maybe one of you guys will attempt not necessarily this particular challenge, but see what you can do if maybe you either blindfold yourself or close your eyes or turn the lights out and really just try to find your way uh, in a room to feel or uh, this, pay attention more to the sounds or things like that. But yes, this is great. And yeah, I'm going to be real, you know, critical of myself. And of course, I'm going to notice every little thing like right here. You know, if you can see right here, there's an area that's open and not sure what I did there, but somehow I, it's not even or something, but, you know, um, again, um, we take for granted sometimes things that we can do and we have to learn to appreciate. And I always do, but you know, this is that much more, uh, just incredible. Um, my hat goes off to you, uh, Marsha Lee. Thank you so much. Um, thank you guys for hanging in there with me. It did take a while for me to do this, um, but I'm, I, I am fairly happy with the outcome. Um, I think I have a wonderful hat. Um, yeah. <laughs> guys, do everything you can to be mindful, be healthy as best as you can be. And also, guys, don't forget to be crafty every day. I look forward to seeing you guys real soon. Please go out and check Marsha Lee's channel, Blind Stitches Creations, and consider doing a blindfold challenge or something like this. I think she would greatly appreciate it. And I think you'll develop a deeper appreciation also. All right, take care guys. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.